Knife Sheaths and Their Proper Uses, William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also the owner and operator of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. In this instance, I'm talking about classic knife sheaths, how they developed, and how to properly employ them to protect your knife. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And today, we're going to talk about sheaths, and how they originated, and what they mean, and how to actually use them, and sometimes not use them. Knives are, of course, sharp instruments. And a knife without a sheath just stuck through a sash or belt is an invitation to either cut the sash or belt or the user. Consequently, uh, very early on, even for stone knives, uh, original people came up with sheaths. Now, sometimes these sheaths were of wood, such as here. Wood is common, it's useful, it's carvable, and you can do interesting things with it. This particular sheath belongs to this harangue, which originated probably in somewhere in the Dutch East Indies. It has on its head a face of a bearded European, a demon. Well, <laughs> uh, colonial Europeans to the native peoples of the world were oftentimes demon-like indeed. And so, the parang. Also, in Africa, such as in this example here, the entire sheath is again made of wood, wrapped in rattan. Effective. Work. The next step up was to take a wooden core like this and wrap it in leather and decorate it, but nonetheless, it's wood that comes in contact with a knife. Well, there was a good enough reason that the Gurkhas, the Nepalese, did exactly the same thing. This is a leather-wrapped wooden sheath, in this case, with a metal tip instead of a wooden one. Why was wood in contact with a blade? When you tan leathers, the first thing done is to take the leather and soak it in salt. Whoa. Salt is very corrosive to steel. Also, the tan leather, it's tanned in tannic acid and water. An acid solution. Hmm. So, your leather sheath contains some salts and acid radicals. So when they are re-moisturized, they are liberated and will corrode your blood. We have a prime example of that here. This is a sheath made by Murray Carter, the same bladesmith that I worked with. This is the knife that was stored in that sheath. And look what happened. It is corroded on the bolster. The blade is discolored because it was kept in the sheath. Instead of being protective, the sheath was detrimental to the blade. Hmm. So, when I had a sheath made with this knife, which is from Mexico, it is a leather sheath, but I store the blade and the sheath separately. 
there are other sheath materials. This is Kydex, a moldable plastic compound. This is one sheet folded back here on this seam, actually folded and molded around the knife after it was finished. Riveted together. Good sheath. Works. This is a neck knife. It holds it well enough to be suspended without the use of a spring. Yet another type of sheath, a metal one. In this case, this is a gaucho knife. Although this sheath and knife happen to be made in Germany for the export market to Argentina. Stainless steel blade. So this is a fairly recent gaucho knife as such things go. This is something made before or during or slightly after World War II, I would suspect. Good blade. In more modern use, this is a moldable plastic compound and is used to make an inexpensive sheath for this knife. The knife itself is a good carbon steel blade made in Sweden. It fits somewhat in the sheath. Not Terribly tight, but some. It has a clip on the back. And the clip is actually part of the sheath material. You can do that with plastics. There's a lot of air circulation room around this particular blade. So it's almost as if this blade was stored in air, in dry air, which is good. Uh, two things, two takeaways from here. One, do not store your expensive metal knives in leather sheaths, even though the maker may have supplied them. And that is why when you get a box knife from, say, Buck, for example, the sheath is in one part of the box and the blade is carefully wrapped and placed on top and separate so it does not come in contact with that leather sheath. Now there is yet another material. Uh, you can use woven fabrics. Nylon. Canvas. Nylon in this case. And this knife is by Ken Warner, uh, my old editor, uh, former editor of the Gun Digest and numerous of the Krause knife magazines. So this was his adaptation of a sheath. Oftentimes, for my own use, I'll make sheaths out of strap nylon. But even so, not best to store your knives actually in the sheaths. So for now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. And, incidentally, some knives are never put in cheese, like this cooking knife, for example. Look. This is another look at my banner and some of our interesting knives that we have developed from Chinese and other origins. And here is a close-up view of the knives without the background material. These are really different. I am the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and other outdoor books. These include crossbow hunting, extreme muzzleloading, and practical bow fishing. And all of these contain chapters on knives that particularly relate to the individual topics. At Hobie's Knives of China, we do everything related to cooking knives, and you can read about it below. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 600 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.